And I'm always like, you're not listening. And then I pull down the pants and I'm like, Ehh. And I'm like, oh, now I get it. Slayer. Slayer. You guys are fucking awesome already, man. I had no idea how this was going to go. Seriously, my cock is an innie right now. Like, I'm so fucking nervous. It, it's a fucking bummer down there. Swamp ass and an innie. And, uh, yeah. Now here's some jokes about one of my all-time favorite bands, uh, Texas Zone, uh, fucking Pantera. You guys Pantera fans? Alright. We all know the history, and if you don't know the history, Pantera, you should know if you're from here, man. Pantera is from Dallas, one of the best bands of all fucking time. And, uh, their story ends horribly, man. If you don't know the story of Pantera, they split into a couple different bands, they broke up, and uh, John McGarrell, one of the best guitar players ever, right? I, uh, I wear this wristband for him every fucking day, and uh, his story ends horribly, like probably the worst moment in heavy metal history. Uh, some asshole climbed on stage and shot John, and it's the fucking worst thing, and it's a horrible way to start a joke. <laughs> What happened next is a cop heard the gunshot. A couple other people went and died. And uh, the guy was uh, one of those assholes who tried to join the military, tried to join the Marines, and he didn't pass the psych evaluation. And in my opinion, if you don't pass the psych evaluation, we should kill you. Because that fucking never ends well. So this asshole climbs on stage and shoots Dime and a couple other dudes. It's fucking horrible. A couple people in the audience. And then what happened next is fucking awesome. A cop is back outside and he hears the gunshots. And he fucking goes, that doesn't sound right, I'm guessing. And uh, he runs in and blasts this guy with a shotgun. Yeah. Fuck yeah. The best thing that could possibly happen to this asshole. Did you think Pantera fans are sketchy outside of prison? Think of the Pantera fans in prison that never got to see Pantera because they killed their stepdad for not letting them see Pantera. Like the baddest ass motherfucker you've ever seen, a guy that does push ups with his fucking face, just five minutes alone. Just fucking waiting for this dude, right? So if this dude doesn't die by this cop, he's heading to this prison and this scary motherfucker is waiting for him. Guy gets on the yard, this Pantera fan runs across the yard, right, as soon as he gets there, fucking jumps on his neck, just climbs on the dude, fucking tears a hole in his neck with his bare hands, and then fucks his neck vagina till he's dead. This fucking fucking hostile! <laughs> now, that joke used to end there, but I knew I was coming here, so I felt like you needed more. <laughs> so if you're this guy, you would really want the joke to end there with you lying dead in the yard while this guy fucks your neck vagina. But it doesn't. Because I feel like I need a stronger punchline to end on. I mean, if this thing's gonna make it on my next album, it needs a bigger bang or a capper or a button, as they say, to close it out. So this psychopath that is currently fucking your neck vagina, right, he brings you back to consciousness and you come zipping back to life. You're at the end of a dark tunnel and you were seeing moments of your childhood, like your mom and dad fighting and your dad leaving and you crying and asking him why he's leaving and him saying, I'm leaving because of you. You're a piece of shit. And then you flash forward through a series of guys that are now fucking your mom. Then there's the guy that fucks you after fucking your mom. And you're almost in the part where you weren't accepted in the Marines because you're a psycho fucking retard. And you wake up in the prison infirmary. You wake up in the prison infirmary and you're like, oh, thank God, that nightmare's over. They patched up my neck vagina. But then you see the man who carved the neck vagina consulting with the prison doctors. I don't know, he just fucking roams around, whatever. <laughs> And you feel your neck, and oh man, there's still a neck vagina, god damn it. There's actually a tampon hanging out of it to stop the bleeding. Right? And then you feel the back of your neck and realize you used to carve the hole back there too. Now you have a neck butthole, god damn it. You scream, 
And uh, he explains that he wanted you to have a neck butthole for his friend. He has a friend. And you can't believe this is happening and point out the hole in the logic of my joke and say, why the neck vagina and now the neck butthole? Why? Why don't you just fuck my mouth? Uh, right? Which is a big hole in the whole joke. Why don't you just fuck my mouth? And he says, because I still want you to scream. Thank you. Thank you. It actually says thank you there twice. That's what a fucking asshole I am. So, I'm going through a weird thing, man, where, uh, I love being in Texas, and I quit a couple of things for my wife and our baby and our future, and uh, I quit going to strippers, and uh, I love stripping clubs. I don't know if you call them that out here, but uh, they don't call them that where I'm from either, but uh, I fucking love strippers, right? Like, my wife frowns on it when I come home from Vegas and my glasses smell like big tits. Like, uh, she's not so happy. And, uh, but I love strippers. Like, if I see a stripper in the airport, it's the same as seeing a dude in the military. It's like, thanks, man. We're, uh, we're super proud of you. You're doing God's work, I think. And my favorite kind of strippers, and I'm sure there's some here, you know, uh, I don't like the hot, you know, the college girls, that, you know, and then the girls that probably should have quit 20 years ago, and then the girls made of plastic. I love the punk rock chicks and the metal chicks that have no business stripping because they hate dudes. You know, the girl that's like covered in inappropriate tattoos, she's got like a back piece, and it's like Count Chocula and Booberry riding on a unicorn, chopping off Robert McDonald's dick with a machete. And you're like, you should put a shirt on. That's fucking awful. <laughs> best one I ever saw, best slash worst one was in Portland, Oregon, another one of the best cities in the country. And uh, it's chick. Above her B-hole, you know, the, the fucking tram stamp? And I know a lot of people call it the A-hole, but I think it does B work. Like, the front hole is clearly the A-hole. If we're, if we're rating holes, come on, and we are. A-hole, B-hole, maybe it'd be the B-minus sometimes, I don't know. Maybe a C-hole, but then that gets confusing. Anyway, right above, the, above her B-hole, all it said was, fuck you. But it was written in old English, so it was classy. So I, I quit weed. I know. I know. I know. I boo myself every morning. Every time I wake up and have to face the day, fucking boo, remembering things. God damn it. Boo, feeling things. Why? And it's been rough. And the other thing is, I've, uh, I've always talked about masturbating on stage a lot because you write what you know, right? And, uh,. I'm doing that a lot less because I'm super old and I'm tired all the time. So now, Pot and my wiener are like Buzz and Woody from Toy Story 3. <laughs> so like, what happened? He used to play with us all the time. What do we do? He must be going off to college or something. And if I was going to college, I would actually need Pot and my wiener, but I don't. Now, uh... I fucking love this city, and I know uh, a lot of people, uh, you, you expect that pandering, and you think I'd probably say that everywhere I go. I did not say that when I was at the gathering of the Juggalos two months ago.